Photoshop can now change the climate in photos and cover landscape shots in snow or turn them into a desert. Join me to find out more about this and all the other cool and useful new techniques added in Photoshop 2022. The object selection tool was already really cool in the previous version of Photoshop, but in the 2022 release it's been improved with a couple of amazing options like the object finder, which is by default turned on and you can find it here in the options bar. What this means is that Photoshop in the background will automatically look for images in your current document and when you hover over these they will be highlighted. So these are the selections that it prepared. And all of this is thanks to the amazing Adobe Sensei artificial intelligence understanding what is actually in an image. So when you click on any of these, they will be turned into a selection. And like with other selection tools, you can of course hold down the shift key to add to your selection. And in this case, we could very quickly select these three pumpkins and turn them into a layer mask. But let's see what happens when we have more complex images like this one. I just wanted to show you that it doesn't take long for Photoshop to recognize these objects. Clicking on this little arrow icon here, I can refresh all the objects in this document and it literally takes only 2-3 seconds most of the time. And to be able to reveal all the objects that it found, I can also click on this icon here. So anything that turns blue means that it is a separate object. And when I turn this option off, I can again hover over each of these and you can see that it has actually done a pretty good job isolating and separating these cats from the kitchen counter and things in the background apart from maybe this cat's tail that's gone missing. However, it is still a good result out of four cats, only one is not 100% correctly selected. Now it's worth mentioning that these blue highlighted details that we can see here are not the final selection. So it's always worth clicking on it and then turning it into a mask to be able to get the final selection detail. So when I hover over it, you can see that the two don't actually match. So the final result is always going to be better than what you see in that initial preview. Now besides the cats, we also can make a selection of this calendar. We can select any of these jars, again individually, not all together, even though they are very closely placed next to each other. We can even make a selection of this clock or thermometer here. We can also select this cabbage, the banana, even though it's on the edge of the frame and the drawers, again individually, the whole kitchen counter together or even the socket here on the wall. Now it's worth mentioning that instead of relying on the object finder, you can still make selections manually. And this can be made with the two available modes, rectangle and lasso. I'm just going to stay with the rectangle and try to make a selection of this object here in the background, which worked out pretty well. Maybe we just add this small section here by again holding down the shift key. And now we have a good selection of that mixer. Now let's move on to some more challenging images. Here, once again, if I select the object finder, first is going to generate the object. And once it found them, we can check what it found. Again, I think it's done a pretty good job. So we can highlight this frame here. We can highlight the lamp. We can also highlight this plant. Even separately, the pot we can make a selection of or the plant together with the pot. And just like before, this is a very rough version of the final selection that we can see here. So once I click on this and save it as a mask, we can see it actually did a pretty good job. And any details that are still there from the original background, we can easily get rid of by double clicking on the layer mask. And here what I would normally do for the images like this is to select the Refine Edge Brush tool, increase the brush size fairly large, and then just paint over the whole thing. Don't worry about being precise here, because what you will be able to get at the end will be a much better selection. All those little details are removed from the original background. And here in the output settings at the bottom, just make sure that the output is set to Layer Mask. Once you click OK, the layer mask will be updated. And this can be improved in two different ways. Either use the dodge tool set to highlights and paint over all of these leaves. And that pretty much fixed the selection already. 
Or if I go back one step, you can also just duplicate the layer with command or control J, maybe once or twice, and then merge these layers together. So this way that anything was semi-transparent will be fully blocked in by having the multiple layers on top of each other. And last but not least, here's another challenging image for the object selection tool and the object finder feature. So let's see what it recognized here, pretty much all of the objects. And if I hover over them, we can see it once again actually did a really good job. So for instance, if I wanted to, I could easily select these, selecting first the pot and then shift clicking on the cactus. We have a very good selection of that. We could select this cup here. We could also select this other plant in the background. But what's even more impressive is that we could even make a selection of this copper uh, sculpture or decoration here on the left side. So even when you have multiple things overlapping each other, Photoshop will still do a great job at understanding what is actually physically in our photographs. Another awesome improvement was added for the select subject option, which you can find in the select menu. And you will notice that there's now two different variations. So there's the cloud version of this and the device version. The cloud is going to take longer, but it's going to give you a better result. And it means that actually Photoshop is uploading the image that you are using. It's going to process it again using artificial intelligence and then send you back the result on your computer. Of course, this feature will only work if you are online, while the other one, you can use it also offline. So let me just show you a comparison of this. First, here on the left side, I am going to use the device, which is going to give us quicker results. And then on the right side, I'm going to use the cloud version. And we will see that it takes a little bit longer to get the cloud version's results, but it will definitely give us an improved selection. So if I turn these into masks, it's probably going to be even easier to see what we achieved. On the left side, we can clearly see that besides losing that cute baby llama's body, we also have a couple of unnecessary details here on the top which are part of the original backdrop, that building and the rocks behind the girl. While on the right side, where we use the cloud version of the select subject feature, we got an almost perfect result for this quite complex selection. The only major negative difference is that on the cloud version, we actually lost a little bit more detail on the feet. But of course, we can quickly fix that by using the object selection tool and just painting over that part of the image and then turning this selection into a mask. Now, don't forget that even though these smart selections are giving you almost perfect results, you should always still spend some time refining manually everything. And that is why using a mask is always the best option because that gives you full control of every detail and it is completely non-destructive. In the previous version of Photoshop, the neural filters were introduced and we could already create some amazing things. But now we have a couple of new ones still categorized within the beta section here at the bottom. But I would say they already are functional and really fun to play around with. So the first one I'm going to show you is called harmonization. So this can help you to match the colors between layers when you are creating composites. Like in this case, I place this couple, remove the background and I'm trying to make it look like they were in Iceland. So all we have to do here is to select the background that we wish to harmonize with. And once that's selected, we will get the result here. And using this little icon, we can quickly switch between the original and the updated version. And I feel like it looks quite good, but if we ever want to refine the result, we can always play around with the strength. That's like the intensity of this filter. But then we can also refine the colors, the saturation and the brightness. So if I feel like it should be a little bit darker, we can just dial that down, maybe even more. And since it's at night, we can also maybe reduce the saturation a bit. So once again, let's see before and after. I feel like that's pretty good. And then once we are ready, we can decide whether we want to save this as a smart filter or new layer or into the current layer. I normally would recommend to use smart filters because that will keep things non-destructive. And with this, we can again check before and after. And just going back a couple of steps, I can actually show you that the original image was shot in daytime. So it's completely different from that image that we used. And to test this filter again with a different background, I am going to go back to neural filters. 
And this time in harmonization, I'm going to choose this other layer as the reference image. And again, I feel like Photoshop has done a pretty good job. So that was before and this is after. Another crazy neural filter that was added is called the Landscape Mixer, which you guessed it will work well with landscape photographs. And what you need to do first of all is to select your reference image again. Let's say we took this photo, but want to see how this place would look like if this was a desert. Well, now we can do that by selecting either of these images here in the presets category. And besides the fact that the town that was there originally is completely gone, I think it's done a pretty amazing job. Even the road here at the bottom is maintained, but now it's covered in sand. And we can see what happens if I choose another reference image. And as you can see, it makes a pretty big difference, whichever preset is selected. And since we've seen how this place would turn into a desert, let's also try out turning it into a snowy landscape. So instead of being covered in sand, now we can see how it would look in winter time. And once again, let's see before and after. Again, it is quite shocking how this is possible. And we haven't even played around with these options here on the right. Like for instance, if we crank up a bit more the winter attribute, then we get even more snow on the image. And I feel like it created an even more realistic result. So the more help you give Photoshop, identifying what you would like to achieve, the better results you will get. It's worth mentioning that besides these amazing presets that we have here, you can also use your own image. And that can be literally anything, but of course, the closer your reference image to your subject, the better results you can expect from the Landscape Mixer Neural Filter. I am excited to launch my 12 week long graphic design starter bootcamp, a unique self-paced online training program for beginners. Instead of overwhelming you with hundreds of hours of video lessons, you will only need to dedicate a few hours each week to study. Most courses concentrate on a single application or tool, while in this bootcamp, you will learn to work with Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and XD simultaneously. Completing the creative projects each week will significantly improve your understanding of everything you learn. You are also encouraged to share your final designs with fellow students in our private starter community and even showcase them in your creative portfolio. Click on the link above to find out more about the bootcamp and how to get started. But now let's jump back to the tutorial. Some of you might recall Creative Cloud files or CC files, which was a similar solution from Adobe to Dropbox where you could share files and collaborate with other creatives. Now this feature has been gradually replaced by the introduction of cloud documents, which we currently have in a couple of applications like Photoshop, Illustrator, Fresco and Adobe XD. And we can expect InDesign to join the ranks as well soon. But now we also have a really cool new feature called Teams and Spaces, with which you will be able to create a shared space where you can store a lot of different things, including cloud documents, CC libraries, additional file formats, and even web links. As you can see, I have created a team called Yes, I'm a Designer, within which I created a demo space. Once I click on this, inside it, we can find a CC library, a Photoshop cloud document and a web link to our homepage. Here on the right side, we can quickly invite people to have access to this particular space. But what's even better is that we can go one level up, select our team. And by inviting people to this team, they will have access automatically to all the new spaces that we create inside this team. Teams and Spaces might not be available for everyone at launch because it's still currently in a private beta, but whoever has access to it will see it not only on the desktop version of Photoshop, but also on the iPad version. And in the future, we can expect to see this showing up in all the Adobe applications, similarly to how we have CC libraries accessible from every application. Another really cool feature that is still in beta, but you can find under technology previews is called content credentials. So make sure you turn this on. And once it's on and you restarted Photoshop, you will be able to find this new panel called content credentials beta, which is going to record and attach the changes that you made to the image. So anyone in the future will be able to tell what's been modified 
to that photo. So just to demonstrate this to you, I'm going to quickly turn this into black and white by using this adjustment. And then if we click on the preview here in the content credentials panel, it will tell us immediately that this image has been manipulated or tampered with and using Photoshop version 23. And the edits or activity includes color adjustments. I find this extremely useful and I believe this is going to become a standard that we will see with every stock image as well. And hopefully this will always record and make it clear whenever an image has been changed compared to the original photograph. This is increasingly important mainly due to those crazy neural filters that we've seen earlier in this tutorial. In the 2022 release, we also get a new option for gradients, whether you use them with a gradient fill layer or with the gradient tool, you will be able to choose from different interpolation methods. Now the default is set to perceptual, which is going to give us more natural appearance compared to the previously used classic method. But of course you can still select that or the other linear option that we can find here. And finally, another interesting way we can integrate the applications. Now from Illustrator, we can directly paste in an artwork into Photoshop with a completely new way. So I'm just going to select this complex artwork and switch back to Photoshop. And there, when I choose Edit Paste, besides the previously available options, now we get this option called Layers which is going to rebuild all the layers that were used for this artwork in Illustrator here directly within Photoshop. And before we see the result, we will also get this little warning that some of the content in the selection will be rasterized. If we are happy with that, we can click and continue. And here is the artwork. So let me just make this a little bit smaller so it fits onto our canvas. And let's check out what happened here in the layers panel. So we can see that most of the objects are maintained in a vector format. So we have path layers here and also compound paths. And then further down, we are going to find a couple of pixel layers. And these will be mainly things with soft edges. So we can turn this on and off and we can see it's actually the glow on the left eye. So that's a rasterized layer, while all these other layers around it are still kept in vector format. So for instance, if I select this, this is a path. And even though we are in Photoshop, we can still access all the anchor points. Now you might be asking, why would you ever want to do this instead of using a vector smart object, which maintains the link between the Photoshop document and the original Illustrator artwork. And I can't really give you an exact workflow example since this is completely new. I haven't used it myself, but it's good to know that we now have this option. And I'm pretty sure that in the future, I will come across a couple of projects where this is going to save my life. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.